Hi guys, right, so this is a bit of a random video. Yesterday was, well, it started off an absolute nightmare. So, this little puppy, this little beauty, my KTM, was stolen. It was stolen on uh, early Monday morning. Obviously, we got a good end to the day, as it's sitting here. I'm going to explain to everybody what happened. I was in bits. How I kept things together yesterday, don't know. Bought this bike on Saturday. It was delivered to me Sunday in my unit here, all nice and safe. Couldn't get it insured on Sunday because the insurance company Bomoto, who I'm with, were closed on Sundays. So gutted at the time, but it is what it is. So rode that beast home, my R7. Come in on Monday, do me work. KTM tech comes down, checks the bike over while I'm working. Get it insured on Monday. Literally ride the bike home by two minutes, park it up, steering lock on, all the goodies, come out yesterday morning, bike wasn't inside its spot at all, bike had gone, been pinched, called the police, the police did nothing, police literally turned around and said, here's your crime reference number, uh, we'll send you a letter and what's your email address. That is all they did. They weren't interested in coming down. They didn't care. And I'm not surprised why so many people now want to get their own justice and try and figure out what they could do and piece things together to get their own form of justice, to get their own back on the people that have done this if they find out, or just trying to find their own bike because the police don't do anything. And that's proof in the pudding yesterday with me. Expensive bit of kit work your ass off, someone, some horrible little idiot decides to take it and they don't do anything about it. Didn't even come down and see me. So, maintenance guy comes down, landlord comes down, we look at CCTV. The CCTV is being uploaded as well, so once you've watched this video, if it's uploaded in time, you should be able to see it. We've got CCTV from all over the car park, literally from where my home is. Uh, from the entrance of the car park to outside the communal area, two different, two different cameras facing outside the communal area, one above where my bike actually was, so we got to see them getting into the bike, uh, one across the road and everything. Cameras didn't really show that much. There was no, you know, nothing you could go, ah, oh, recognize that or any discerning plates or anything. So what we ended up doing was, we got that was a copy of that, got it on my USB stick, I then copied it onto a computer, and that is what I've got that I'm gonna show you guys in the next video, which should be uploaded at the same time as this, hopefully. I started playing detective, as you do. I mean, I was in bits, but had to try and find out what had happened. We noticed from the camera that they'd gone outside where I live, and literally across the road, and it was planned. Everything on this was planned. Somebody was watching everything I've been doing. Now we know this is planned for one reason. I've had so many nice high powered bikes, including a brand new Yamaha 2022 plate R7, which is now sold by the way, for those of you that wonder why it's still here. This is what I was doing, selling that to get one of these. This is being picked up on Thursday. But no one's targeted anything. Aprilia's, Hayabusa's, you name it. No one's targeted them. I get this bike back for under 24 hours. No one in the car park. Not told a soul about this bike. Even my family didn't know about this. I mean, under, under 24 hours, it's gone. Somebody where I live, in the block that I'm in, knows what's happened and knows what was going on. Saw this probably get on the blower, we'll have that. You'll see on the, on the video, there was four people. Two people physically got the bike, tracky bottoms, third tops, 
crash helmets on, gloves as well. There was a, there was a white, I think it was a Vauxhall, or white Vauxhall car that pulls in across the road. And there was another bike. Now we're trying to figure out what that bike is uh, that pulls in across the road as well. Now we followed everything on the camera and we started knocking on the houses up there because quite a few people up that road actually have CCTV, very luckily for us. We managed to get a copy of the footage, which that's something different I've got to edit too. But it managed to push us in the direction after looking at the CCTV as to where they pushed the bike. Now we knew they wouldn't be able to ride this bike. That bike is literally state of the art ECU. If you haven't got a key fob, which is obviously it's keyless, keyless ignition, keyless steering lock. If you haven't got a key, you are not starting that. If you lose the fob, you are not riding that. If I lost the fob now, couldn't ride that. Cost a fortune to get through it, to get it done, to replace. So we knew they weren't gonna ride it. So they pushed it. Now we counted on our CCTV above the bike, because I've got this, you'll see it on the footage. It was under eight seconds to get that steering lock off and the rest of my security and push it out. It took them 30 seconds to get the bike out of the car park, under 30 seconds to get it physically pushed out, under eight seconds to get this off. These guys now have got battery powered angle grinders. They've got all different things to get in. Doesn't matter what security you have, if they want it, they will take it. And it is disgusting. You work your backside off for some absolute, you know, to rob your pride and joy. But anyway, we were playing detective with this. We'd started going up to houses, getting the CCTV footage, and we saw roughly what direction they were going in. Now, what tends to happen with newer bikes, this is to anybody out there that experienced a very similar situation, there might even be someone on here that's actually had their bike stolen, right? This is just what you need to bear in mind. If you've got a newer bike, or even an older bike, most people will dump them. They will dump them. They won't just take them back and strip them down or go to the port and ride them across or whatever. Ignore all of that. Most people will get these, they'll hide them somewhere, usually a day, 24 hours, right? They'll hide it somewhere to see if you've got a tracker on your bike. If you've got a tracker on your bike, if it's a good tracker, because some of these ones can be deactivated and people know different ways around this, this is kind of one of those things. But if you've got a couple of young scropes that decide to steal a bike, don't really know too much about it, they will hide a bike somewhere not too far away, 24 hours, to see if you've got a tracker, because if I had a tracker on that bike, and considering how close this was, I would have literally looked on the map and gone, there it is, gone down there with my fob, jumped on, rode back, right? So they'll leave it somewhere for 24 hours usually to see if anyone picks it up. If no one picks it up after 24 hours, this bike's gone. It'd be taken, it would be stripped. Because the last thing someone's gonna do is take it somewhere, stick it in a garage. If you've got a tracker, the old bill will be all over it. Plus you'd know where it is, I'd know where it is. You and the, your mates would go around, do you know what I mean? It's how things are. So 24 hours after that, you've got no chance. Is the brutal truth with this. Now we drove around every alleyway, every you know, run down area that you'd think, because normally with something like this, you'd presume that this would be hidden somewhere undercover or in a wood somewhere in a really run down area where someone's gonna try and hide it where they think you're not gonna look down. It was the complete opposite. So this was parked up in a really in a half decent modern flat, ironically across the road from my very first office block buildings. It was literally hot luck. We turned the motor around inside the car park and this was sitting underneath the car park near a block of flat entrance sitting there, just sitting there in the corner. I ran out with my fob in my pocket, jumped straight on the bike, steering lock had been broken obviously, but pushed the button, fired it up, off we went. Rode it, literally rode it like I'd stole it. I'd only ridden it for two minutes. And it's me flying up the road, right, back to mine, no crash helmet, so I wanted to get it back. Everyone looking. The guy behind me with the car, who obviously we were looking around with, he's skidding his wheels and stuff, trying to stay as close to me as possible, because we didn't know if anyone was watching. Got it to mine, grabbed the crash helmet, got my jacket, rode it straight to my unit, lock it in, 4K motion sensor cameras, massive building, as people will know. You got no hope in hell. Safe. So luckily, I got it back. And it was a massive thank you to 
the maintenance man at the block where I live. If it wasn't for him showing us around and me and him being proactive with me, looking around, it would have been long gone. It would have been long gone. And that would have ruined everything. This is my only form of transport. Like I say, this one's going. It's already been, already been bought. It's bought, sold to buy this. The problem we've got now is trying to find out who did it. It's too coincidental. Way too coincidental. I have a bike for under 24 hours and it's gone. These being what they are, so it's a KTM 1290 Super Duke R, right? It's an animal, they call it the beast. KTM call us the beast. 1300 cc, 177 brake horsepower, 100 foot pound of torque. It's an animal, right? It's a powerful thing you can buy naked. It's a lovely bike and they're very desirable. Digital screen, everything. But the, the problem is we've got, nobody knew about this bike. Nobody. No one walks into the car park. The car park is off the road. It's a private car park. It's camera up, camera signs everywhere, lights everywhere. And every other bike I've had has never had a problem. We're trying to see who's done it. We will find out who's done it. We will. Because all you need is, is the scent of one person who was involved, and then the next thing you know, that one person, you'll find that information, turns into the next person. Now we've already got an idea, at the moment, we've spent the last, well I spent yesterday evening, because I was out with the missus yesterday, daytime, as you can imagine, the last thing I wanted to do when we got this thing back, was work. I was not in the right frame of mind, all I wanted to do, was go to the pub. <laughs> I was going to the pub. So, we went to the pub, got some food and stuff, bought some booze for uh, to say thank you, cut a few bottles of vodka for the matey boy who found me bike with us as a thank you, it's the least I can do. Um, you know, they spent the evening trying to piece things together. So there's a couple of things we're trying to figure out at the moment, we've got a couple of leads, um, can't give anything away obviously, but I'm, I, I mean I'm not going to stop until I find out who tried to pinch this bike. Because even not just me, if this happens to anybody, this ruins someone's livelihood. Now, luckily for me, I don't live that far. I can walk here, right? And my business security is top of the range. I mean, you you are not getting in. You just aren't. I'm sorry, you're not. You get to find me first. And that's, a, that's even more of a task. Uh, security, the security guys are next door. The alarms go off, they're here in 30 seconds. The place has got 4K motion sensor cameras. Follows you. In, follows you out, gets on your face, registration front and back, and anything, tons of lights. You just, no chance, no chance. We've just gotta try and find out what's happened. You know, who's done this? Now we gotta check the CCTV at home to see if the country are coming back, because normally if you probably think, they probably walked out and got, hang on a minute, the bike's not there. Their young scrotes probably trying their luck again. They're going to try and go back and see if they're there. Now, a lot of people were saying to me, why aren't you just waiting around there overnight with a couple of bats with a couple of friends and get them? You can't do it. As much as I would love to do that, guys, as much as inwardly I would have loved to have done that, and I'd love to do that, get a bit of justice, you can't. I can't risk my business. I can't risk losing things because there for two seconds of getting angry, it's not worth it. Yesterday, I wanted blood. My friend wanted blood, I wanted blood, as you can imagine. I mean, someone's nicked my baby. I've had it under 24 hours, basically. I've even ridden a bloody thing, and someone's, someone's let it off, you know? So I wanted blood yesterday. But then, the day goes by, you sit down and you think, and all you can do is play by the book. I will try, and, I'm, I'm gonna find out. We will find out. I mean, I know thousands of people, and to be fair, there's contacts all over the place, people sending me CCTV, Facebook especially, CCTV from different areas, We're trying to find a clear shot of the number plate, front and back of the motor, the bike that was involved. I mean, they're probably nicked, but you just don't know. Maybe someone doesn't want a bike or a car that's been stolen to do something like this because it looks too conspicuous, it looks too obvious that it is that. Do you know what I mean? There's all different ways of thinking about it. I thought this would have been hidden in a rundown area and it wasn't. I presumed wrong. Can't presume that the plates on the bike and the car that did the job were also stolen. You just don't know. 
you don't know these people are very clever and it was planned if you when you watch the cctv you will see how well planned this was they knew exactly where they were going they peered over the fence to see if my bike was still there and there's another biker there as well he's got a little 125 had no intentions of his they knew that was there and they knew exactly how to disable the steering lock on this right luckily there's no other damage the steering lock was obviously automatic so i can still ride that's going to cost me a fortune to do but it's just way too suspicious they knew exactly where it was they knew exactly how to remove it <laughs> they parked out the corners you can see them waving where to go and everything this was planned from the minute this bike was removed and if i get any updates on the cctv at home from anybody else and we find out what happened during the course from monday onwards anything new i'll put anything online and all i'm going to say is this if anybody in colchester essex has any information regarding this if you know who did this or the group of people that are involved to take this please let me know okay please let me know imagine if this was somebody else I've got family things going on at the moment and I rely on my transport not necessarily for work work I'm very lucky with where I am obviously can't now ride a bike to work can't ride a bike home to work from work I've got a walk to my unit to get my bike to go and now see my family you know bad issues with the family at the moment someone's very ill and I need to be there and I can't now have to walk to my business to get on my bike to go up there all because some idiot decided to try and target me and steal my bike I now cannot park anything in my spot I can't ride my bike. I can't ride my only form of transport, which has now screwed over everything. There's worry going from my partner's head with all of this, because as you can imagine, it's not nice knowing that this sort of thing happens anywhere. You kind of you don't think it would happen to you. It's the truth. No one thinks this sort of thing would happen to you for themselves. I mean, I've always been, oh, it would happen to me. You know, I've been there X amount of years. I mean, we've lived in this same place for five years, right? Five years in this block that we're in. Never had a problem. And like I say, I've had Aprilias, big Aprilias, new Aprilias, brand new Yamaha behind me. That has been sitting there. I've had that since March. No issues, no fingers on it, no nothing, no nothing on camera. You see, you could go the other way. Either someone saw this and went, that's an easy target, we'll get on contact, we'll get it gone. But my Yamaha, when I put that up for sale, for an example, obviously no one knows where I live at home. That's No one ever will know that. But... You know, someone asks you about the bike and they're interested and they ask the details. You put two and two together. It could even be the people that are asking you about the bike. You just don't trust anybody. But nobody had my address for that. So it can't be anything to do with this blue one. I don't think it's anything to do with people that are interested in that. This, on the other hand, is too suspicious. Like I say, 24 hours of being sat there. It's, under, it's in my car park spot for under, under 12 hours. Under 12 hours. It's gone. Well, not even that. It was it was nicked in under eight hours, and the car park was quiet as a mouse. Insane. So just keep your eyes peeled and watch the CCTV, guys. It'll be popped up shortly. It's about ten minutes long. There's a bit in there in between. It does take a little while to get into. I think it's the second part of the CCTV footage, but you will clearly see them drive up on the bike, the car going in. Um, you know, walking over to peer over the wall, walking around the building. You'll see them in their trackies, trainers, lids with the gloves and stuff on. If anyone out there's got any idea as to, or recognises anybody again, or thinks they know what the bike is, or even the car, please let me know. And I'll be sticking the other CCTV footage up at some point on the block of flats, so from the houses across the road from us, because they've got the plates. Problem is, the plates are just white because of the camera. Um, the bike and the car dead in front of them. We can't make anything out. So if anybody out there wants to have a crack at trying to edit the video for me, you are more than welcome to. I just want, I want them found. I want them found. It's too easy just letting things go and letting people get away with things. That's going to cost me about 600 quid minimum to get that sorted for the part that I need. I've had the bike since Sunday. Right? 
Luckily, I got it back. So this isn't, I'm not even bothered about the cost to get this sorted. Luckily, I got it back with no issues. It's fine, just the steering lock. They moved it two foot and then moved it five minutes. You know, it's a heavy bike. It's 200 kilos, guys. It's not exactly a light thing. And these little scrotes, they look, they're kids. They're kids, do you know what I mean? They're kids. Part of me wish they got it running so they could ride it and kill themselves, to be honest. It's disgusting how people could actually get away with doing things like this. It's horrible. It is horrible how they can ruin someone's livelihood like that. I looked on Facebook this morning. There's another guy on the KTM forums. He's had his bike stolen. Exactly the same bike as mine. He's nowhere near me. He's miles and miles and miles away. Hours away, in fact. But he's had his bike stolen. It's thousands of pounds. Thousands of pounds. Gone just like that. Livelihood changed in a split second. If I didn't have this back, I'd have no transport. Can't see my family. Can't go and see my suppliers. Can't do anything. So from now on, my transport lives where I well in my business. It's, it's, that's that. I don't think I can be. I don't think I can risk leaving anything in this car park spot. The other alternative was to give it a week, buy a cheap run around with cheap insurance, and lose that. But can't risk that because Sods will have tried taking it once. They're going to take it again, aren't they? So we can't be doing it. So the only solution that me and my other half have got after yesterday's shenanigans is move we have to move we've been there five years we can't risk it now so we're going to move we're finding somewhere else to live with a garage or garden with a nice lockup um it's horrible more money now being thrown out looking for somewhere paying deposits moving and everything else but it's the safest thing to do it's the right thing to do but my emphasis now as well as my work is to find these thieving lot see what we can find, see if we can piece it together. I know a lot of people in Colchester with bikes, we've already found out a few very well-known people, local here that are, you know, well-known for basically thieving bikes and drug run and that sort of thing. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm sorry, this isn't a, the usual turntable style video, but I thought I'd just let everybody know because this was insane, you know, Wake up in the morning, your bike's not in your car park. Four hours later, you've got it back here. And it, <laughs> I did not think I'd be seeing that again. That's thousands of pounds down the drain if I had it done. All that hard work, saving up, doing things, would have been gone. So yeah. unbelievable somebody up there has been looking after me said to my other half yesterday this is fake this is right with this bike I'm never selling that didn't want to he didn't want to get stolen he wanted me to have it <laughs> with my track record with bikes if you follow my facebook page you'll know what i'm like um no nah, this is never getting sold now this is fake a couple of people have been saying on my business page to buy a um, winning lottery ticket i've already done that i don't need to i've got what i wanted back i won the lottery getting it back but yeah, for everyone that's been following this post on Facebook and have been leaving comments, sharing the post, because quite a few people have, uh, trying to get the, the word around on my personal page and my business page. Thank you ever so much. Honestly, guys, thank you so much. Um, it's nice knowing that there are people out there that are just reading things and going, oh, look what's happened there, and just you know, leaving, letting it all die. Thank you ever so much. It does mean a lot, honestly. Because um, people know from my my page is how much I rely on my transport. It's my transport, but I only form transport other than my legs, right? <laughs> I can't just walk everywhere. It's not possible. So thank you. Thank you very much. But yeah, anyone's got any information, lives around this area or knows of what's happened and genuinely knows, you are more than welcome to contact me. Um, any information, I really appreciate it. And I think we'll leave it there, guys. Keep your eyes peeled for the CCTV footage. Feel free to comment below. No nasty comments, please. Okay, it was secured, it was done properly, and I don't want no ask, no ask comments. So thank you everybody for posting, sharing, doing what you're doing. I've got my baby back. So thank you guys. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing. Take it easy, everybody.